Hello, everyone, and welcome to IFFR Afterthoughts with uh, Norika Sefa, uh, the director of uh, Looking for the Nera. That's her first feature, and it competes uh, for the Tiger Award of the 50th IFFR. Um, hello, Norika. Hello, uh, nice to meet you virtually. Yes, good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, first of all, thank you very much for this beautiful and very subtle work. Um, I will start with a, a general question. Um, I think this film uh, is more based on the atmosphere, the mood, um, the, that kind of, you know, floating in between spaces rather than on the narrative and the story itself. So I'm just wondering uh, uh, how much have you been inspired by, by that particular place where the film is made? And can you just tell us a bit more about the uh, environment uh, where the action takes place? Yes, Eugenie, that's true. Like, uh, to be honest, like I didn't have the space in mind while making, the, while writing, the process of writing. I think I wrote the script and uh, when I considered that was pretty solid or that contained that kind of mood because the script was not written in a very formal way. It was mostly gathering the scenes which will kind of um, uh, gather or like establish the mood and uh, of, of the film that I wanted to make. But then um, since I lived for a long time abroad, when I came back home, uh, the, the place I had in mind was completely changed. So I had to kind of search within Kosovo territory to find that particular place that was giving me that kind of uh, feeling. And uh, this small town where we base the film, it's not far from my uh, the place where I grew up and I born, I was born there. So uh, I decided to go there and actually uh, live in the space. And this, uh, not the change the script so much or the story, but it totally gave me an idea of how would I approach visually this film. And uh, besides me, I, I somehow wanted the whole crew and later on even the cast to move there and to live for like a period of a month before we were starting to shoot. So somehow we all kind of, um, explore the space but also allow the space to kind of uh get into us and like uh, yeah know where we move and uh, because uh, also how the film was shot we consider this in mind like the geography of the space where dorina lives like the story uh, considers two two sisters two uh, friends so for me it was important like which part because it's very diverse as, as, a, as a town one part is very building up where the rest is like mostly left on the shadow so for me, this was also a part of like, how would I, uh, would I tell the story by changing the spaces within that particular town? So yes, uh, visually it, um, it changed a lot when I saw the space. So it was important for you and for the crew to be absorbed, absorbed by the place. Uh, uh, yes, absorbed look like we let go. We don't control ourselves. I think it's mostly like, we wanted to be familiar, we wanted to feel comfortable with the space and uh, not to have this kind of, because the story itself considers a girl that is trying things for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want that she uh, uh, like somehow sees also the space for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted her to merge in the space and then whatever uh, indication or like whatever uh, nuances that we put within the film, then she could react to those differently, but not like I didn't want to make her alien because that's not uh, the story of the Venera. Yeah. I also think the film has a, um, a clear uh, documentary touch. And I think that's related to what you're talking about now. Uh, was it also like part of your concept to make it kind of as, uh, um, to film it as close to, uh, to the reality as, as possible? Not really, like maybe, uh, well, I, when I think about that, because I was asked the same question and I, I appreciate that people find this kind of documentary touch to it. I think it mostly comes from uh, the way I, I approach filmmaking. It's like, I'm fascinated. For me, uh, more than telling the story, which is like part of filmmaking, because that's how you, ba you like the base of the process is. But when I approach or when I go in front of like, a, I had the camera and we kind of set up everything. For me, it starts the fascination with the things. 
how much we can see stuff uh, when we actually set up the camera and you say quiet and the sound is recording and and maybe this is like uh, that. I, yeah, I kind of know because not much have changed from the script. But yet, when you see those things coming alive, I'm just fascinated. I think like I allow myself to be fascinated by uh, what I see, and that's how maybe this documentary uh, like view on things uh, comes. Besides that, I think like um, I, uh, it's it's really not a film that kind of is driven by a story, a plot, or like twist. So the most important part on this film co I consider is like casting. And uh, I went through a very long process of casting. I think I saw more than a thousand of girls to kind of find Venera and also Dorina, her friend. And most importantly, to combine these two friends together. But uh, I, I mean, it can be a completely different film if I chose different actors, because it's really those energies from these actors that kind of come in the film and then you let go you follow these energies between them and the film life starts to gain the flow and the shape and so on. But when I met those people, for me, uh, because they are not actors, like uh, most of the cast is not actors. So, and uh, the logic of approaching them was like that. I didn't want to give them the script or talk about film too much, but I wanted to get to know them. So when I got to know them while shooting them, for me, it became clear that actually, I want to see how they react within the circumstances or the situation given. I want to see how these energies that I brought in uh, collide or like, uh, yeah, merge together. And uh, maybe this is a bit why it kind of gets this documentary feel to it. But at the same, at the same time, it's a very poetic film. And I think you, you beautifully poeticize the everyday and you have like a very special attention to the everyday. Uh, maybe can you elaborate on, on that part of the film? Because I mean, we, we're kind of, you know, there's, there's, there's already like a kind of a dominant uh, uh, image of, uh, of, of the region, uh, uh, of the just Balkans in general, and we're already like kind of, which is created by the media and also uh, by, 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 the, by the cinema. So, and where in a way uh, I used to, to see this region uh, as, as a place uh, completely like influenced by poverty, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's in most cases it's shown as uh, something like which is full of uh, misery, well, etc. And you completely avoid those kind of uh, narratives, you know, and you show this kind of everyday living of those people in a completely different way. However, uh, it is also super. Um, truthful and very authentic thank you um well uh i haven't thought too much about this because maybe i reacted to what i saw and uh, to be honest i i love my country it's not that i wanted to make a film that kind of uh repulse is repulsive towards something and when you said i just thought of it because when you said like poverty for example i don't express it uh poverty is such a big word it can be more poor and poorer or mm -hmm. richer but for example, poverty in our in our film, uh, in sense of like, let's say when we approach the home, the the homes that we use, the inside the environments, like when you are more poor, you tend to like not have the, the too much room, and everything is in one room, and there is more layers and more layers. But I found beauty on it because those layers were texture, were colors, mm -hmm. were like a, like a mess but that mess gives a lot to the film the depth the and so like maybe uh maybe that's what I, that is like what is more poor than what you see in the different like european houses or i don't know but uh i i didn't uh, i don't think about this when i when i did the film i wanted to portray the place i'm seeing i didn't want to 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 think what is it i'm portraying uh, i didn't want to have a judgment it's mostly like yeah. To react to what I feel is surrounding me. Uh, surrounding me. It, it is indeed observational, observational, and it's not uh, judgmental at all. And that's, I think, also the beauty of this work. I, and I wanted to ask you about the colors in the film because I think, uh, I mean, the cinematography uh, has like a very special palette, color palette. Uh, the, the colors are super smooth, very soft. Uh, did you have any references in your mind uh, while you um, filmed? those places, you know, in, in that kind of style. Uh, again, I say like when, 
uh, I mean, I knew particularly which season I want to, to, to film. So we were trying to make everything happen uh, in between like March, February, because that's what I felt like this place because of the relief it has, like mountains and also river. It's, and that kind of sun of that period gave a lot more depth to the place. But then I, I told you like I was living abroad. When I go over there, it's for me surprising. I don't think I needed reference to be honest. Mm -hmm. I live in, in Czech Republic and it's like complete different environment from what I, what I live now here in Kosovo because I'm for the moment in Kosovo. So, but then when my cinematographer came and we, used, we uh, decided to live there for a month, it became clear that we kind of have a lot of resources within the space, you know, and, uh, bec and the colors and everything. I think like, uh, again, since it's not a story driven film, you have to generate expectation. You have to generate um, energy or like, uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, the, the whole, like uh, waiting for something to happen in the film by a lot of layers. And those layers came from environment because for example, a lot of what Venera feels or emotion she goes through comes in the environment. You feel it through what surrounds her. Like she mirrors what she's going through. And for me, this was very important. And because it's a, it's a youth driven film, uh, it's not a, a temperamentic youth, but it's a youth that is very curious. It's like an age that kind of explores and wants to maybe know whatever surrounds them. It, like they don't have a, a judgment form. So they are very curious as an age. I think this also gave this depth I think. Like we wanted to make it, uh, yeah, like uh, not washed. We wanted to let live everything around her. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Yeah, I think Venera is indeed, she's like, she explores everything for the first time. She doesn't have any preconceptions about anything. And I think you managed to show that process as a process actually mm. uh, and the film is also very uh, very the images you create they're, they're very tangible very tactile um, and you just mentioned that you filmed it in a particular uh, period of season like in the end of uh, end of spring yes and I understand it, uh, and you, uh, it, it was you know, to it, feel that kind of you know this this the, the climate mm, I would mm, say, mm, you know, mm. uh, that is there um but coming back to the maybe the social aspect of the film uh i think, also, I think the, the film also touched upon the issue of this patriarchal patriarchal system uh uh in which uh, uh venera is raised uh um however as, as we already discussed uh you uh, don't uh, ex don't present this uh, narrative explicitly you uh, avoid all the cliches that uh, that can be associated that, that with, with, with this narrative. So, but still, uh, what is your take on uh, these tensions which are created by the by the but by a very patriarchal society? Um, I think uh, more than patriarchal society, we are a very traditional society. Like somehow we, uh, as a country, and I understand from the history we have, it's not an easy one. But uh, because we somehow struggled a lot to establish kind of uh, to, yeah, to, to bring to a status quo our families, our life, it's super hard for us to move. And because of, I feel it's a, a fear of uh, convert, conversion that all the, you know, like uh, all the wars we have and so on, they, there's always this tendency to change you as a country, to put a name for what you not are. Mm -hmm. And I think this comes to also in the root of our fear somehow as a people, we don't want to change. We don't tend to move too much. And, um, and actually this film uh, came as a, as an idea of how less we talk uh, or discuss about things, you know, and I see this a very uh, big issue within the families because we have very big families. I mean, I was grown up in a three generation family. So there was a lot of mix of energies and emotions and perceptions and, and yet you don't discuss because it's not in our culture. We don't have somehow the tools, you know, to kind of discuss about things. And uh, I find this very tricky for a youth temperament somehow, mm -hmm. like to go on somehow in a circle and to be always appreciating what you have inherited because it's like, you are lucky that we have this. 
uh, these are the words that we grow up with somehow. And uh, yeah, and this can generate a bit of guilt as well, you know, and you don't want to change too much, you don't want to move because you don't also have a reference or to what you, you know, you follow or imitate. And maybe these are that uh, limitation that kind of this society brings to. But um, yeah, and I think like patriarchal we are as a society for sure, but I think it's more traditional. It's like way more like, um, yeah, in a, in, a, in a stagnation that we don't kind of, we are still checking. It's very fertile, you know, like as a emotional, uh, in mm. emotional level and uh, yeah. But does it does it that also mean that the characters they kind of um, lacking this you know instrument to express themselves to express their emotions? Do they lack intimacy in a way? Because there is this beautiful scene in the film when like two two characters uh, um, driving are going somewhere in the car and they're entering some tunnel and like in this darkness they're talking about their parents their mothers and fathers and they say they never seen their parent, parents kissing each other and uh, it's a very strong scene um, what 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 can you elaborate on that uh, issue a bit? Uh, I mean when I first uh, it is in, in the in one of the scenes it's like when the girls talk and then they have never seen the parents kissing and the other says yeah yeah disgusting why do you want to see such a thing I think uh, it comes from this, what I just mentioned, that is like, we are very fertile in how we express the emotion. You know, like, uh, we are not vulnerable as a country. Like, uh, and uh, yeah, and it's like, what mostly we think about is being correct. Is being correct because I think, uh, yeah, we have this kind of, um, kind of urgency to make it because a lot of a, a time have passed with, with us being like under somebody so I think we are trying to be the, you know, always correct and vulnerability is not a word. It's not, it's like weakness in a lot of cases. So, and for, for particularly for this moment, like I think it came uh, from myself as well, like this line that I have never seen my parents kissing, but then when I told to my producer and the crew, the reaction was the same. I mean, maybe not, not nobody have seen the parents kissing, but they didn't even want to, talk about this and it's not that it's uh, ugly uh, like uh, behavior but it's like how we react to that oh we don't want to think now or to discuss about this so this kind of um, yeah it's not being uh, vulnerable or like uh, explore it's it's not in our culture somehow you mentioned uh, uh, in the beginning of the interview that you yourself uh, left your homeland and you have been living abroad uh, for a long time and I think this is also like um, uh, a, a potential story that is hidden somewhere you know in the layers of the film because there's this also this kind of uh, um, a classic narrative of, of an escape of someone who wants to escape uh, the place where he or she um, was born or lives uh, was it something you also wanted to um, stress in the I mean not uh, not with intentionally, but you know, like the film is made by a lot of layers that comes from us that we don't really control. But uh, I think like uh, more than escape, I would say like find, uh, wanting to find more space for expression that you can express whatever. And actually in the film, when you say about observative, uh, uh, like um, approach to it mm -hmm. is mostly because of this lack of expression when you lack the expression you tend to be like observing you want to check to find this kind of like any anim animalistic uh, like uh, kind of instinct that you want to make it comfortable for yourself and uh, this is more than like you know escape uh, extreme I, not really I I don't know maybe <laughs> I was not aware of it <laughs> No, but I mean, the, the, the concept of escape is very much related to the concept of home and, you know, coming home or leaving in her home. And I think that's what also is happening to Venera because she's, you know, in between those uh, states of being. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, there is also a layer in the film when we talk about like the foreign influences, for example, and that comes a bit for my life because, you know, I see how different, you know, because I was, I, uh, 
I am glad that I, somehow I created or I started the process of writing while living abroad because I could see nuances that not particularly I was aware when I was in Kosovo, you know. So maybe this kind of comes with- But also uh, gives it, gave you like a, a different perspective. That, yeah, that's true. Thank you very much, Norika. Thanks a lot for this beautiful film and uh, I wish you all the best with it and uh, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you for having me there. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, whoever decides to watch the film enjoys it or have a good experience whilst, while watching it. Thank yeah, you. For sure, thank you.